Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number eight of my journeyman career in Football Manager 2015. Today, we have a game in the cup and also after this, we have a very important game in the league against FC Porto away from home. It's probably one of the hardest games you're going to have in the season and you can see we are doing really well. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to keep uh, the form and remain undefeated but as I said it'll be one of the hardest games of the season it's funny all the other best teams in the league that you think will vie for the title FC Porto, Benfica and Sporting CP they've all got the same stats they've all won six games drawn three and of course lost the one so they're kind of tying right now and we're we're really shown as the dominant team in the league but you can see the difference there they've been pretty good defensively uh, we've conceded more goals but yeah, we've scored a lot more as well. That's uh, really the difference we're showing. But yeah, the Porto, it's going to be it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a real tough game. And for those wondering, um, the Portuguese league is not sorted by goal difference. Obviously, you can see that where Benfica has more points than Porto. How that's sorted out is results between the same team. So obviously, Porto would have had a better result against Benfica. I'm not sure if you can see the wins. Well, they haven't played them yet. So that will sort itself out. Um, yeah, sort itself out over time when they do get those results. So, yeah, I just want to let you know for those wondering because Benfica has more goal difference if you didn't know that. Uh, yeah, that's the situation on that. But here uh, in our cup game, yeah, as I said, I really want to do well in the cup. Like, there's a real situation. There's a real possibility I could win a cup this season, whether it be this cup or the League Cup. This one's not the League Cup. Um, where is it? Yeah, the League Cup is not entered yet, but this one, it says uh, Tacha Deep. Oh, that's probably wrong. I'm not sure how to pronounce that with the C. Is it Taka, Tacha? Not really sure. Um, both are probably wrong, but I'm just calling it the Cup for now. That's the best way to say it. Uh, but yeah, this is probably the main one. The League one is like Capital One Cup in like England, so I'm just guessing. But of course, my main goal is to win the League this season. But if I could win the League and win a Cup competition... Like I said, whether it be League Cup or this one, it'd be a good one to put on my resume to uh, look for jobs in the future um, at a bigger club. So it'd be real good. I've made some rotations um, in the first 11 because, yeah, it's a cup game and we do have FC Porto next, like uh, dropping Edzair to the bench, bringing Zay Louise. I still think this guy can be real good because he can grow a bit. Um, even though he's 23, he's still got a bit of potential about him. He can yeah, be, a, I guess, the, as the backup striker off the bench, he can be okay. Um, who else? Also, Philippe Pardo. He's another... Uh, you know, he's been having problems with his match fitness. I have a little idea why it may be. I'm not sure. Definitely, it's not because he's not playing. Look at this. I guess he got injured in the last game. But even if you watched the previous episode, he's had problems with match fitness before. So, I think it's because he's had problems with training. He's had issues with training. Maybe we're working him too hard or something. He's unhappy with training overall and happy with the high amount of extra training he's been asked to do. That might be a reason why his match fitness um, is severely lacking at the minute. But all I can do right now is play him. Uh, that's all I can do. And if I go to his actual training in his development, go training, um, the workload is on medium. So... Oh, that's not. I don't think that's personally asking him too much. Hopefully, he just gets over it. Because yeah, medium workload is not that bad. Um, I want to be. I don't want to be working on light. I want to work my players hard in training so they show it on the pitch, which they have done. So I think I rotated the team uh, pretty well um, for this situation, whether it be to give players match fitness, uh, to give players who want to play more games like Pinto and Goiano, and yeah, mixing it well because we are playing against Boa Vista. They are in our league actually. They're a bit lower in the table. Where are we? competitions. Uh, Bal Vista, yeah, they're almost in the relegation zone, so uh, they no doubt want to focus on the league. So I reckon we have a good chance to win with still not playing our strongest side. And uh, of course, I want to remain, uh, yeah, unbeaten and see how long we can go uh, with this kind of yeah way of playing. And yeah, uh, Vincent Bubacar, this guy, he's been a pretty good player in Football Manager for quite a few seasons, like when he was at uh, Valenciennes as well and at Lorient. He's He's always been a good player in Football Manager, like a good young striker that's got a bit of pace and strength and that can finish as well. He's uh, But saying that I've never actually signed him, actually I think once, it was like an FM12 or something. Uh, but yeah, he's always been a good striker, uh, definitely recommended. Like if you have money for him, you need a striker, wants to join you and you don't have anyone better. Yeah, big signing, uh, big yeah recommendation for me. Okay, where we go, apply, yeah, apply the advice to the team again, assistant just applies the weak foot. 
Um, they, he doesn't seem to apply any for like t- yeah, tight marking or closing down or tackling, but I guess it hasn't been <laughs> affecting the results, has it? We've been doing, uh, performing well. So we'll go assertive here, and hmm, yeah, if we play our game, we'll win. You're all very capable of that. And yeah, uh, Zay Louise is relaxed. He still hasn't scored for us, so we'll be looking for him to um, yeah get on the score sheet because yeah, say if we get Adair injured for whatever reason, he's the next best striker we have. Honestly, uh, we do have Pardo, but he's more natural as a winger. So, but yeah, he has scored for me. Oh no, mistake there. That was six. It was Pinto. Poor oh, lucky Leo Zinho. He couldn't. Well, that's a really disappointing. That was actually a real poor shot. Oh, Tiago. Oh. Tiago Rodriguez injured, not great. He was just becoming um, fit as well, match fit. Uh, the signing from FC Porto. So, hmm, should I bring on Danilo? I'll bring on Ruben Mikael so we can just... Because no doubt he's been an amazing player. I wanted to rest him for the Porto game, but I guess he has to come on here. And I'll say... What should, I'll say passionately. And I want to see a good performance. So, yeah, we have to make that change, unfortunately. I thought it would have been a good situation to give, yeah, Tiago Rodriguez at least at minimum of 60 minutes uh, to start, uh, to give him some, yeah, experience, because he is a young player that's um, very talented. Would love to give him some game time, but unfortunately got injured. Now, Pedro Tiba, another guy who wants more games, finds Zay Luis. He tries to get past, and it was a good, clean tackle. No penalty there. Well defended, actually, by them. Goes back to Mauro, Pinto, just playing nice and steady game here. How I like it. Look at that passing, short stuff, and then the ball out wide to Enrique. Zay Luis finishes! Exactly what I wanted from him. A great goal to score, and it's not like a cup game against a lower team as well. It's against a team in our division, so it shows he could score in the league as well. So it was great. Well created. Enrique's been fantastic at left back. Great ball as well. Zay Luis with the control from his chest and coolly finished when the goalkeeper was out of position. But again, assist to Enrique. Well done. Come on. Oh, good tackle. That was Custodio. I was praising Custodio, uh, Custodio in another episode. Like, he's been really underrated, just you know, performing his role. He's not going to score heaps of goals or get heaps of assists playing in that halfback position as that third center back he pushes back. So, yeah, he's not going to get amazing ratings. But he, yeah, he does. Uh, see, he's only got 6.6. .6. He just plays his role for the team. And if I go to his overall rating, it's still 7.16. And he's actually surprisingly got two goals. <laughs> so, yeah, he's definitely uh, performing on all counts uh, for me. He's a great, yeah, great player um, at his role. So here we'll go assertively, guard against complacency. Uh, a lot of players motivated and gaining focus as well. Puts us in good stead to, yeah, continue on uh, with his performance in this game. A second goal uh, to really kill this game off, I reckon. We'll see how we go. Look at all the space, though. Look at all the space that when the fullbacks get forward. This tactic creates so much space and formation, the set yeah, positioning of the players. Oh, but we don't need to be giving it away like that, surely. Oh, ooh, almost winning it back. Lamine. And even in defense, uh, like, we have a lot of... Yeah, like, when you attack, when you saw before how much space we had. Oh, no, but they're on here. Matthias, good save. Uh, for the most part, I was going to talk about, like, in defense, I feel we defend it very well. Whoa, that's another close chance. We don't yeah, we don't let them have much space on the ball. And, yeah, players in space like I actually get. So, yeah, all parts of the game I'm really happy with so far. And that showed on the scoreboard and the way we're playing. So, that's all good. Whoa! Whew, we are lucky. We are so lucky not to concede here. Oh, we're going to have to go. I'll see what happens here. Then I'll just pause it quickly in case we concede. Okay. <laughs> we're pretty lucky. I'm just being honest here. I'm being honest. Like, I'm going to go assertively and say, concentrate. Come on. That's, we are looking complacent. And I said not to. Oh, yeah, Leo Zinho coming off. He hasn't really took the chances that he's had. And we'll make some changes in terms of substitutes after what we see happens here. Ruben Mikhail. Finds Enrique in that space. He could assist again. Finds Zay Louise. Oh, Pedro Tiba on the rebound. 
What a goal. And again, it was created by Enrique. I really want to sign this guy permanently, but unfortunately, we don't have the funds right now. But he's such an effect as that complete, um, yeah, what is it called? Complete win back here, yeah, <laughs> getting forward. And Zay Luis unfortunately couldn't finish it, but uh, Pedro Tiba was set to pounce. So we'll just pause it there and we'll make some changes now. We'll go into advanced tactics. And yeah, what should we change up here? What should we change up? Who needs a little bit of a a little bit of a break? Who have we brought in here? We've got Ruben Mikael. You can see we made that sub. Uh, yeah, Felipe, again, Felipe Pardo hasn't played too well. So we're going to bring on Salvador Agra. He's come, from, yeah, come back from that injury, um, as you know. So he's lucky match fitness. And he started like a house on fire as well. First seven games, four goals and four assists in the league. He was really, he was just so dominant as a winger. He's just one of those real natural wingers that gets past his man, and I, I really love him for that. He's an amazing player in that way. So anyone else? I'll leave Zay Luiz yeah, for match fitness. We'll save Adair for the Porto game uh, solely. How, what's his value now? Yeah, it's over $5 million. Uh, No teams are technically interested, but, you know, um, Sporting Lisbon had that interest. Hmm. I'm not sure who to take off, if I'm honest. I could bring Danilo on. It would be weird to take off... Uh, where are we? Uh, Ruben Mikael. See, he's listed there. It's a bit confusing. <laughs> it's listed, yeah. I su it would be weird to sub him. Oh, no, I'm going to take a Pedro T, but I'm going to bring on Alan. I, I think he still needs match fitness. If you go to Alan, yeah, he still needs match fitness, coming back from an injury. But you know that captain's goal he scored in a previous episode. That was really amazing. Um, Goyano as well, once first team action, and he's getting that right now. So, yeah, hopefully he'll be happy uh, soon. <laughs> I'll say I have faith in Salvador Agra and he looks happy. Alan, what are we going to say here? Just say calmly. I'll say, show me what you got today. Uh, he's, it's going to be hard for him because we've got a lot of good wingers, but he's the captain. He can play on both sides of wing as well. I suppose that's a yeah positive. And here I'll just go on team talk and I will say calmly, actually passionately. Oh, they must have added that in the latest update, to add passionate into uh, the touchline team talk, because I didn't think it was there. It was left out. So anyway, uh, we'll go tighten up, just to make sure, yeah, we'll still be on control and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, just tell the boys uh, to tighten up and make sure we don't concede any goals, and make sure we advance in the cup here. Yeah, so we're doing well in terms of possession here. Uh, they've got a corner late in the game here, but Adelan Santos, he dealt with that, and the match is over. Again, it's another convincing performance. Unfortunately, Thiago Rodriguez picked up that early injury, but we pushed on, and again, it's Enrique with the player of the match performance. <laughs> He's been so good, and as you can see, contract, yeah, $3 million for a future fee, but unfortunately, we we're actually $1.28 in the red, so we'll probably not be able to make any signings at all. Not just him, so we'll go passionate again and say, um, yeah, that was a good win. That was a good win. D absolutely, do I think this is one of the few, well, not few games. We still had a lot of possession in previous games, but when we really dominated, we really dominated in this game, so I'm happy with this result. Whoa, look at this already. They've already proposed new contract talks. This is real interesting. Look what they say. It says Braga chairman. Antonio Salvador has invited you to enter into contract renewal talks with the club's board. Before contracts begin, or contract talks begin, the club's board would like to give you the opportunity to propose modifications to the current club's vision. If the board agree to the suggested changes, they'll take effect uh, once you renew your contract. It says the board wish to make it clear that they reserve the right to adjust the transfer and wage budget in the future and without prior consultation, which is fair. So I'll just accept. I just want to accept. Like, I don't, I'm not going to ask for more money or something because we're in the red. Actually, the balance is in the red. So I don't want to affect, like, affect that by signing more players. We don't actually have the money to, and I don't want to go into debt or anything like that. That's, yeah, I'll just accept the current vision because I'm happy to, yeah, be offered a contract this early. It's only, yeah, November. That's real early. But I'm just going to view the offer. It's still 2017. Uh, they give me some uh, wage. I'm happy with that. I get bonus for qualifying for Champions League. 
let's just suggest it and finalise the deal. I'm really happy uh, to be tied down to Braga for a few more seasons. Uh, but that's a big one, though. That's a big one because I'm not sure if I'll get offers, yeah, offers from other teams. But that could be a good realistic date to leave the club 2017. That will be like, what, three seasons at the club? And if I say I win the league this season, get into the Champions League, and maybe do the same the following season and maybe go further than we're expected to, We'll see, we'll see how it pans out, though. We'll see how it pans out. And, yeah, maybe other big teams uh, will want to try and get in contact with me to be the manager. And so, obviously, that will be accepted. Uh, all the fans and, yeah, the board are happy about signing that. You can see here, Braga's manager, footy manager TV, has put pen to paper on a two-year contract extension. Uh, the 20-year-old is now set to extend his stay at the club until June 2017. And yeah, I, I made my age the youngest possible, so it's kind of my manager can last. Like, who knows how long this series could be? It could be super long because it could keep going uh, for the duration of Football Manager, to be honest, because with how it's how with how with I'm planning it, it's never it doesn't have to ever end, really. I can just keep going. So yeah, um, it, it, this should be an amazing series. Right now, my Manchester United one's getting a bit more views and likes, that kind of thing, but I'm actually personally really enjoying this one so far. Because uh, we're doing real well, so it's good to have that tied down. It's really, it's a good plan for us, uh, and, to, and especially for my career as well. That could be, like I said, the realistic time where I would look to, yeah, try and find another club, unless I get a big offer before then. So you can see here, Felipe Pardo is still having problems. Uh, he's complaining about the high amount of extra training. Like, what's the extra training? See, it's on heavy now. What's what's the problem? He's learning on his playing position, but that has to be there. See, he's working 0% on that. Is it just because he doesn't want to learn a preferred move? Or, like, it's on heavy, sure, but... Leave your thoughts. Leave your thoughts. He, like, he's the only one that's showing problems about that. Like, yeah, no one else is having problems. Oh, no, Ruben Mikhail. Ooh. See, there's something here. I could give him injections... But I'm not one who's normally done that. But I'm going to try it because FC Porto, that's a key game. So I'm going to see if it will work here. Um, yeah, it said it could aggravate the injury. But yeah, like he's one of our more key players. If I was to do it for anyone, like it would be him. Like his value is 7 million. Like I'm almost, oh, I don't want to sell him. But if we're in financial troubles... If there was interest in January, which I wouldn't be surprised because he's playing amazing, I'd consider letting him go so we can get out of the red in the budget or in the balance more specifically. So, yeah, leave your thoughts if you would do that as well because I hate personally being in the red and we definitely have enough central midfielders uh, to cover for that, and especially if we start well because uh, then, yeah, we can make sure we'll be in top four at the very least. Okay, so another uh, game of interest was Sporting CP. Uh, they came 2-2. They dropped points, uh, especially at home. Like, w this four, these four big teams, you really got to be expecting to win your home games. You really got to be winning those. And to drop points there, uh, yeah, puts them in a hard position now being third. Uh, at least they got the point. And FC Porto, even more so now, they need the win. They need the win just to, yeah, take second position. And... Uh, for us to be in that first position, the only unbeaten side in the league so far, um, and that's what really led to me you know, being offered a new contract. I've got to be pleased about that, how everything is going. But, um, as you can see, another manager. Things are getting a bit serious now. Yeah, managers getting sacked and all that kind of thing. I can't just rest on it and say, like, we're playing well and just keep going. Games like this against FC Porto, I've got to think. I've got to be uh, strategic and all that kind of stuff. I can't just, yeah, keep going on. To, I have to be smart tactically. Um, so what's happening here? Uh, Thiago Rodriguez, uh, yeah, he picked up that injury in the last game. He's probably not fit enough, so I think we'll, we'll leave him ooh, on the bench against his old team. I'm not sure how he'll fare against his old team, but... He's probably, yeah, a good centre mid. We don't really... Abdul Nouri, he's still... Like, he's a young player. We're looking to play him in the under-19 games. And, yeah, he's severely lacking match fitness. So, he's going to just try and keep playing there. But, anyway. Yeah, we've got even Danilo could potentially come in. But, Ruben Mikhail, we gave him the injection. So, he might as well play him. And, Mauro has been decent as well. And, look at all the superb morale. We're in a really good position. Uh, Enrique is really the only one who's not on superb morale. Which is a bit weird. Because, he's actually playing decent. Uh, but Andre Pinto, yeah, you gotta, I gotta, 
I've got to bring in the cavalry here, bring in Diego Mainz, who is technically the better defender, and Bayano, who technically is the better right back than Goyano. Goyano just wants that first team games. But yeah, FC Porto game, we have to make sure we make the correct changes Ooh, and play our captain, Alan. Sorry, Pedro Tibber, you have to be top for this game. Uh, he's only got a 6.86 average rating as well, Tibber, so he's not doing amazingly. But he did score in the previous game, and of course, Adair's going to come back in. But we have a lot of those slight concerns, don't we? <laughs> Which is making it tough. But uh, Felipe Pardo as well, do we start him or bring on someone? Oh, of course, I rested Rafa. Can't forget about him. I just rested him for the previous game. I'll take Felipe Pardo out. Ooh, I'm not sure whether to discipline him, if I'm honest, to keep him out, because he's complaining about training. He's a guy... He's done okay for me, like three goals from his appearances he's played, but he's he's the only one that's really having a problem with training. So I might actually sell him, especially where, yeah, we're having problems financially. He could be one that's transfer listed uh, going into January because I don't like players complaining. And yeah, it's it's something I don't like. So I'm going to yeah take that cause of action, dropping him out of the the whole squad, really, because he keeps complaining about training. I wish, I don't think it's possible. But I would like to be able to talk to him, tell him just get on with the job, d just keep training um, like everyone else is. Everyone else, no one else has a problem with it. So what's your problem, basically? That's one of, yeah, what I want to ask him. So I'm not sure if you can do that in like the, talking to the player, but we'll just move on. So we've got good players, yeah, good set on the bench, do we? We've got Zay Luis striker, Pedro Tiber can play center mid or right wing. Uh, Salvador Agra, who'll come on, make that impact as a winger, I reckon. Tiago Rodriguez, if we need, or Danilo. Uh, this guy here, if we, if I do stay here for a while, he'll be an important player for me, maybe in the second and third seasons, Danilo. Um, Four-star potential ability. Um, yeah, he can play either as a defensive midfielder or a center midfielder. And yeah, going forward. So yeah, he looks... Um, he looks pretty good. Um, maybe if someone like Ruben Mikael, if we do actually sell him, a guy like Danilo could step up, and we may have to. He's worth seven million. We could almost yeah drag seven or eight million out of out of him. That would be decent. But here, FC Porto, we're still gonna. Oh, I'm just thinking. I don't think anything I could change tactically. I don't know because this is doing well for me so far. Of course, Porto's the better team, but. I want to play my natural game, what's been getting us results. It's not like maybe another tactic, we have a normal 4-4-2 or something like that, where you could have a more defensive formation of that, where this has a specific way of playing, as I've always said throughout this series, and you can't really change it up too much. If you do, if you try and play defensive with this way, if you look at the stats, where are, well, not stats, the instructions, uh, we yeah, use offside trap, um, higher tempo, um, push higher up as well, well, much higher defensive line. It's all about being the dominant team. So if we can go out and do that against FC Porto, we've done it against a lot of teams this season. Um, I remember the game against Benfica. That obviously was the hardest game we have faced so far, but we didn't get the victory there. So we've beat all the other teams we're expected to beat. That's the situation. But now a game where we're probably expected to lose... Uh, Porto favourites, it'll be interesting to see how we go, see how we fare. In theory, I'd be happy with a draw here, but look at their players. Jackson Martinez, Quaresma, Adrian, um, the centre mid, you got Capania, Herrera, that is Hector Herrera. He's a decent midfielder as well. Almost, yeah, better than what we already have. Uh, Casemiro, whoa, this guy's good. On loan from Real Madrid. He's a great defensive midfielder, very, very strong. And look at the defense. They've got Martins Indy, Mykon, Rolando, Luis Antonio. Not sure who he is, but he's 23. He's he's okay. Nothing special. He's actually a natural center mid. And they got Andreas as their goalkeeper. So, yeah, he's, he seems okay. He seems like an okay player. So that is a solid team. Technically, yeah, that is probably their team is probably better, but we have good players ourselves, like Adair, Rafa, Alan, the captain, uh, Ruben Mikael, you got Mauro in there, Custodio, and the, fo the four at the back, you got Enrique, Adelan Santos, Diego Mainz, and Bayano, and Matthias, our keeper. So we've got some talented players ourselves. So we'll go apply advice to team. See now, when it's when there's more quality, like guys like Koreshma and uh, yeah, uh, Jackson Martinez, you can see why you would tight mark those guys. So we'll go in. We'll go, we'll, what should we say here, passionately. Uh, I'll go calm. Uh, pick up where you left off last time out. 
just yeah, really how we've been playing for the whole season more than anything. Oh, this is our biggest test so far. We were able to draw against Benfica. Maybe unlucky not to get the win back in that game. And now, FC Porto with so many amazing players. Casemiro getting forward, but Custodio dealt with that well. Caresma, who has all the talent in the world, maybe lacked a bit of work rate. He definitely had the potential um, and the talent to become maybe a world-class player like a Ronaldo, but he never really did. He moved to big teams, no doubt, but I don't think he, he didn't really perform. And he could have. Come on, Rafa. Boyano. Real chance here. There. He steps up to the plate. Oh, it's offside. Uh, to me, that just looked like a genuine goal. But I guess we'll check on the replay. He's probably just going to be just off. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Oh, no. That's... Look. Look. It's... He was in the same line as the defender. If you saw it. Of course, the actual line that shows the red to the blue was in front of it. But if you looked at the players, they were in line. Oh, I feel hard done by here. Oh, and then they score. That just makes it even worse. I feel hard done by. Wow. Ooh, this is a hard one to take. This is a real hard one to take. I'm not sure what the goalkeeper was doing, though. Going to have to try... Oh, what are we going to say? Passionately or go assertively? What am I going to say? Get creative. Show your creative talent. Forget about what happened with the offside. But then now they've got a corner. Oh. Oh. It sinks now. We are sinking without a trace. It all could have been so different if that goal counted and wasn't offside. And by the looks of things, it looked onside. He looked on equal with the defender. Very disappointing here. We're going to have to just change it up here. We're going to have to just go get, get attacking, play attacking football. But that's probably going to yeah leave us vulnerable. But it's all we can really do here. But we have faced a better quality side, and that that has shown. That has shown in the first half. We'll go aggressively. Show me something else. Come on, really. Fire them all up. Motivate them all. Come on, we need to show something here. We need to show something. Oh, I'm just so pissed off. Oh, that offside. It wasn't offside. Oh, I don't know. if I'm pretty sure... He was equal. I'm just, yeah, seeing what I saw at that time. But, whew. We haven't, but apart from that, we haven't looked like scoring. Like, everyone's played a bad game, uh, Enrique. I'll bring on Sasso. Can't really play there effectively, but we have to change something. And he's not going to be effect uh, with that, that condition. Um, Mikael, the injections didn't really do anything. So, that was... It's probably a waste. We're going to miss him for a while now. Thiago Rodriguez, bring him against his old side. Who knows? It's still possible. It's still possible we could get a goal, get two goals somehow. I'm not really sure how, but maybe Salvador Agra. He's someone you could see. Maybe take him off for Alan. We have the players definitely to do so. Um, maybe we'll move Mauro just from defender support. Just get forward a little bit more. A little bit more advance. Sasso, I have faith in you. Thiago Rodriguez. Show me what you got tonight. And Salvador Agra will go calmly. We'll say, I have faith in you. Come on. It's going to be hard. I can't really... Technically, I can't see it happening from what I've seen in all this game. We only had that one good chance, and that was um, the offside. Um, so, yeah, I'm not surprised we're not getting any more chances. FC Porto, they're just a better quality side at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, it's, of course, on, they've got Oliver, that got on loan from Atletico Madrid, who's a real talent, and you can see he almost makes an impact there. It was a bit hard um, trying to win away, but it's something we learn from, and yeah, we'll push forward from, and yeah, like I said, we'll learn from it, and it'll make us a better side going forward um, into the future. But this is what i got to be careful of. Like, say if I keep up the form and I do get in Champions League, and yeah, like top three will do that. 
I'm going to get these kind of games and probably a harder game against a harder team in the Champions League. So I definitely have to plan for that tactically. But I'm not really sure what variation of this... Because, yeah, we're, we're practicing. We're practicing playing possession stuff, not playing defensive. So I'm not sure how to set up a tactic um, in a similar way we're playing that is defensive. So it's something I'm going to have to think about, especially if we do make Champions League, because we won't have the quality to match it with better teams. You just saw the evidence there against FC Porto. So you can see now, after the injections, um, yeah, um, Ruben Mikael is going to be out for a week. So it's not too long. It's not like a major injury or anything. So I think it was worth it to try, to try and win that game. But uh, we get... We had to deal with that game. Definitely, we had to play it at some point, and we had to lose at some point, but it's probably the hardest game you're going to face away to FC Porto, like I mentioned. We we tried our hardest. We probably deserved the goal, that offside, and I guess we'll never know what happened if that was counted as a goal. Um, I could have went a bit more defensive with that. Not really sure. I uh, could have made positional changes. Again, uh, we will never know, but I've got to praise the spirit because it's not like we got dominated or anything just yet. A bit of individual bril uh, brilliance more than anything, but hopefully enjoy the episode. If you want to see some more of this series, drop a like, and I'll see you guys next time.